Good afternoon, Governor McMaster, Major General McCarty, our South Carolina surviving families, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marilyn Bailey, Fort Jackson Survivor Outreach Coordinator. At this time, we do have some surviving families with us from South Carolina, and I'd like for them to introduce themselves. We'll start with Mrs. Williams. My name is Elaine Johnson from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Uh, my name is Jade Medeiros. My husband was Staff Sergeant Ronald Conley. My name is Julie Shields Monroe. I'm here representing my brother, Andrew Shields. My name is Vanessa Servius. I'm here. Um, my brother was um, Sergeant First Class John Jean. His father. This is okay. My name is Adrian Brown Mills. I'm here on behalf of my son, U.S. Navy, Cornelius Dante Brown. Okay. My name is Deborah Williams. I'm representing my son, U.S. Navy, Chief Petty Officer Kendrick Williams. It is an honor to welcome you to the 2022 Survivor Hero. Christmas tree lighting ceremony. There is no greater honor than to recognize those who have given their lives while protecting and defending our country. They remain in our hearts today. We are mindful that no words we offer or deeds we do can truly erase the pain of their absence. Yet you, the survivors and families, your steadfast love and faithfulness has been an inspiration to our entire country. You remain a vital part of the nation's military community and history and have our continued respect and gratitude. It is my pleasure to introduce the South Carolina Adjutant General, Major General McCarty. Good afternoon. And on behalf of all of our servicemen and women and their families, we are honored to have uh, the opportunity today to recognize our fallen heroes here at our Fallen Heroes Christmas Lighting Tree Ceremony. We're thankful to uh, Government Master and the First Lady, Mrs. Peggy, for allowing us to, to, to do this event and have it here to recognize our families. Uh, we have the names of over 600 of our servicemen and women on a scroll here we can never forget those who have served and paid the ultimate sacrifice in service to this great nation. During the holiday season, it can be very, very difficult for, for our servicemen and women and families to deal with the loss of their loved ones. So as we pause here today to thank them for their service, to thank them for their sacrifice, we would just ask all the citizens of the great state of South Carolina to hold these heroes in their thoughts and prayers during the holiday season. And to, if you know a veteran, thank them for their service. And if you know that they may need assistance, reach out to someone that could help that veteran through this difficult time. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for allowing us to honor our heroes. At this time, we'll have a few words from our Gold Star mother, Mrs. Sarah Williams. Good evening. I'm here on the behalf, I call myself a special Gold Star Mother because I have two that served. One is deceased and one is disabled. So that's why I call myself. And I did say I called myself a special Gold Star Mother. When my SOS called me last Thursday, I was actually sitting in my recliner and he asked me to come and speak today with a back injury and meds that I can't take while driving, so I'm not under any right now, but I am in pain. Um, but anything for my soldiers, 
and I don't say that lightly. I'm usually on Fort Jackson speaking to the soldiers that have finished the course to do what none of you guys want to do, and that's to come to these spouses, these parents' house, and deliver the message that their loved one is gone. I was livid, and I'm gonna speak a little bit about me and my experience with mine. Being a housewife was very odd for my color. I was a housewife most of the time with my children. They all were honor graduates. I have four, two boys, two girls. I asked myself a couple of months after it happened, what did I do wrong? My husband worked out of the home. I was able to sit home and take care of the kids. They never wanted for nothing. I never wanted for nothing. I don't want to step on no one's religion, but I believe in the Father Almighty. And he sent me this answer back. You didn't do anything wrong. Your kids was disciplined. They got good education. My baby is presently getting ready to go to the law school of USC. She graduated three years from the College of Charleston with the highest average in political science. She had people like Merle Smith encouraging her along the way, Senator Phil Laventis, which they're all good friends of my family and many, many more dignitaries. And I still ask the question, why? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. God gave me the crystal ball one day and he let me know life has no expectancies that us as humans must know that we're exempt from anything. My son was my third child. There were three people with him. They got out with a scratch. He didn't. And I was still questioning and asking why. I did everything right as a parent. I did everything right as a mother. They were very disciplined children. But then, I had to face that crystal ball and understand that my father, I don't know about yours, I know about my father, he makes no mistakes. And once I started to living that within my soul, it is not easy. I have not unpacked my soldier clothes as of five years, August the 6th this year. I have not unpacked my soldier's clothes. I have not moved anything out of his garage kept vehicle. It's not my time yet. So all of you parents, spouses that are under the sound of my voice, I'm here to let you know this is a pain I wish on no other, not even my worst enemies. And most of you probably like, she got enemies. All of us do. Some of us, we know them. Some we don't, but we do have enemies. This is a pain that never, ever goes away. Sometimes I wake up and everybody asks. My husband is my height. He's not with me today, but my boys, I have two of them, 6'3 and 6'2. Where did they get the height from? They inherited from their grandparents, not their mom and dad. But I always was able to chop them down to my size. <laughs> to this day, my oldest has two, and he's married. And I tell his children, if they call grandma to school, and I'm an educator myself, it best be for an honorary assembly, or you're getting something else. Because if not, ask dad what I give him. When he was in school, you're gonna get double because you're the grand. It's a new generation. But guess what? It's the same punishment with this grandma. And I wanna leave this with you all. I very seldom use my phone. But this is something that caught my attention. And it says, the greatest man in history named Jesus, had no servants, yet they called him 
master, had no degree, yet they call him a teacher, had no medicine, yet they call him a healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. Family, be blessed. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Today we light the Survivor Hero Christmas Tree. The gold star ornaments are a positive symbol of national gratitude for the hundreds of thousands of American men and women who bravely made the ultimate sacrifice to preserve the freedoms we enjoy. The star ornament also helps us to promote healing for the thousands of families who cry for and deserve recognition for their sacrifice of their loved one. We will always remember them and honor their selfless sacrifice. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me and welcome the governor of South Carolina, Governor Henry McMaster. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll be very brief. That's a, an eloquent story, a moving story, and I believe that every name that's on the list back there, everyone, every family, not only in this state, but in the country with a gold star has a similar story. But I'd like to remind us all that the, the sacrifices, these, these are things that uh, we never can repay, but we can recognize. Uh, South Carolina is a military state, eight major bases, uh, over I think 400,000 veterans, and we've eliminated pay, uh, income tax on their pay, on their retirement pay. South Carolina is the only state in the country so far that has entered into an agreement with the United States Army out at Fort Jackson. It was done at Fort Jackson. That any soldier discharged from the Army can come to South Carolina, we'll guarantee them five job interviews with participating companies. And the Department of Workforce gives preference to military veterans. <clears throat> but some of them never get to be veterans. But the sacrifice that they made and that their families make are the things that have brought us today to be in the greatest country that there's ever been in the history of the world, and without them, it would not have happened. So I, I'm confident that I speak for all South Carolinians when we say that we appreciate those who are willing to step forward to protect and defend the Constitution and the United States of America, and that that spirit lives no place stronger in this country than in South Carolina. So this is a tremendous program. We want to continue, and we want to make it stronger and stronger. And I say we, we remember so because we are strong, and we are strong because we remember. So now I will follow the instructions and oh, okay. light, light the tree. Okay, okay, okay. So at this time, we're going to count down to five, and then we will light the tree. Five, four. Three, two, one. Hey. Hey, hey. On behalf of the South Carolina Survivor Outreach Coordinators, we have Shannon Banks, George Bershey, Jody Spivey cannot be with us today, and myself. We hope you find comfort and strength in the people that surround you and the wonderful memories you carry in their minds and hearts. This concludes our ceremony this afternoon. On behalf of a grateful nation, we salute you and pledge that we will never forget. May each of you have a blessed holiday season.
answer that. Um, oh, I wasn't prepared for that. So I think for the, this program for me, um, I have a very good relationship with my um, CEO, the Casualty Affairs Officer, and she's been really great. The first question I had for her once things kind of settled was, is the Army done with us now? We've been um, an active duty family for um, 14 years, and that's really what we knew. And so I wasn't sure where we stood with our soldier gone. Um, and without any hesitation, she just said no, like that was the most ridiculous thing I could ask because the Army will never be done with us. And I think that that's the nice thing about this program because it really um, is a great example of um, the family that you create um, when you're a part of something um, like the United States Army. So that's um, created just an, a new family and now we have a new mission. And so that's why this program has, I think, really been great. And like, you know, if you see familiar faces and um, it helps with, you know, just f feeling you're still part of the community. And can I have you spell your first and last name for me, please, just for the record? Uh, my first name is Jade, J-A-D-E, and my last name is Medeiros, M-E-D-E-I-R-O-S. Well, my name is April Woolsey again. I'm a native of Columbia, South Carolina. I also, I also served in the U.S. Army. My husband was uh, Staff Sergeant Jay Woolsey, and he got killed while I was actually deployed to Iraq, and he was due to come there two weeks later. So this was June 15, 2003, and we both were 24 years old, and I'm 43 now. So with this state, my state actually reached out to me. The American Red Cross reached out to me um, on a separate message to get to me because of me being prior military in the reserves. And when they saw my name come up, they sent me a special message. But being with the Gold Star Wives now and the Survivor Services, South Carolina has definitely been good to me because I've had numerous of, of avenues where I can go to never feel alone. Um, there's been plenty of programs, such as, like I said, the Gold Star Wives and the Survivor Outreach Services, that they ensure the hardest times are the holidays because uh, we miss our significant other. We miss, and for your mothers, we miss our children. And there's never a day that goes by that it's made easier. We just learn how to cope with the programs that are set in place here in South Carolina. We cope better. We learn how to adapt. but. We never get over it. I, I think I can say for everyone safely, we never get over it. We just learn how to get better and deal with it. So my state has done, us, done me very well, and I'm proud to say I am a native of South Carolina. And as we get through the holidays, I always tell everyone to just try your best to keep yourself busy. Um, do what you used to do. Do what you love to do with your loved one. That never stops. Their memory never stops because you're still here every day. Any day you wake up you're allowed an opportunity to make it right and to keep life going. And thank you for your service too. Okay, can I just spell your last name? Oh, uh, that, my name is April, like the month, W-O-O-L-S-E-Y. Very good. Any more? Yeah, I would like to say something yes, sir. regarding to his question. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my name is Elaine Johnson. My son was Specialist Darius T. Jennings, killed November 2nd, 2003. Um, for the state of South Carolina for 19 years, it's, it's been good. The program has been good. But I'm just going to give a little shout out to the South Carolina National Guard. Um, General Robert B. Livingston first adapted me into the National Guard, and I'm full Army. <laughs> but they, they adopted me into the National Guard. And after that, then my buddy right here, General <laughs> Van McCarley, and in his absence, my good friend Jeff Jones, 
they have been awesome to me. Um, I feed the veterans every year at the National Guard, and I, and I thank you for that. Um, I come to the governor's mansion, and now to the state house, thanks to my friend, Governor uh, McMaster. So it is, it's, it's good from the month of January to October. And I'm going to say this, it's like we be for, I be forgotten. Then November come, that's, you know, then people reach out to you because that's my son's death date. And then Christmas, doing this, you know, it makes me feel good that my son is not being forgotten. But to be honest, January through October, it's like if I don't keep it going myself, it's like nobody know who I am or who know who he is. But I attend, oh, I forgot about the Liberty of Celebration, right? That's good. The liber Liberty of Celebration is good. They honor the fallen soldiers. So if we can get more during our months when there's really nothing happening, if something can happen, so you say, okay, your son is still alive in the state of South Carolina. But I thank all of those who reach special National Guard. I'm Army National Guard. <laughs> but I thank, you know, thank everybody for reaching out to our, our mothers. We got two fairly new mothers. Um, I'm the vice president of the state of South Carolina, American Gold Star Mom. And I am the president of the Carolina Jasmine State um, Chapter of South Carolina. And to help my newly mothers, um, like I tell them, they look at me, they say, well, you're so strong. I said, well, if you go behind closed doors, you would know the difference. But I have to be strong and help my, help my newly gold star moms and let them know that the pain will never end. We just find things to kind of slide past, but we never forget. And we don't want the state of South Carolina or nobody to ever forget the sacrifices that our family made. I'm not going to let you forget. <laughs> but, I, you know, don't let the state of South Carolina forget who we are. We are special. We, our children paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. Now, you don't have to come to the holidays celebration on Saturday to get the rest of this. My name is Sarah Williams, S-A-R-A-H-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, specialist Anthony James Williams, Jr. What I usually do for every birthday of his, seeing how it happened three days after his birthday, he loved to eat. He never gained any weight, but he loved to eat. I cook, cook, cook. I'm a southern cooker. I cook for his birthday, but happened this year, we were vacationing. So I did it when I got back home. For the holidays I cook, I'll never forget. His first holiday back home, I cooked all of his favorites. He came in, he says, Ma, he said, you cook all my favorites. I said, yeah. I said, what I want you to do, I said, I have some to-go containers. I said, some of those fellas didn't get to go home like you did. Take all this food back and you share it with them, some good southern cooking. Find out from his friends, he was stingy with all that food. He didn't share it with us. I said, he didn't. I said, I sent him enough food for two weeks. He could have fed all of you. He didn't share that food with none of us. So that's what I do for the holidays. I'm always cooking his favorites. And if any of you soldiers, I live right behind Shaw Air Force Base. I can like literally reach out when the planes get ready to go down. They go down over my housing development. If you want a good southern cooked meal, just come in my development. I live in Patriot Village, 421. <laughs> I'm not going to say the rest. We are on air. And trust me, if you ask anybody out there, they'll lead you to my house. I will cook you a good meal. Thank you very much.